So today's video is exciting. We are gonna be setting up your Facebook business page. And I'm gonna show you from A to Z everything you need to set up a very strong foundation that will get you started on the right foot. Now you, as of this point, cannot create a Facebook page without first having a Facebook personal profile. So that's why we're starting here. We are on our profile page. We are going to go up to the icon at the top right, the plus sign, and we are going to click create. And then we are gonna come down to where it says page and we are gonna click on page. Now this is the beginning of creating our Facebook page. And the pretty cool thing that Facebook is doing now, if you see on the top right here, you can actually click between what it would look like on mobile as well as what it would look like on a laptop or desktop. And you do want to keep checking these because, you know, the specs for mobile are quite different than the actual um, laptop or desktop. So we just kind of want to make sure it's clean looking on both sides. Okay, so let's go over to the left side here, page information. So of course we want to give our page a name. Uh, for today, I'm going to put J Smith MD and uh, category required. So I am going to be focusing on autoimmune disorders. So I doubt they have anything that specific. How about we look up holistic Alternative and Holistic Health Service. Okay, I feel like that's pretty niche. I like that. Um, you can keep, you know, searching and looking around for different things, but I think that's as specific about as we're gonna get. Um, now they do allow you to choose up to three categories. Just understand that underneath your um, page name here, your first category cho choice is what's gonna um, show up here. So we look at health let's just see what health health and wellness website health food store mental health medical and health so maybe I'll do medical and health and a health and wellness website we'll just go with those three and you do, I do encourage you to use all three choices um, this is just going to help you come up a little bit more often in searches uh, the more sort of key keywords uh, rich that you are then the better off you're going to be when it comes to people searching for you and actually finding you so description, uh, you can use up to about 255 characters, I believe here. And again, I do suggest you use as many as you can to really give your uh, potential audience as much description of what you offer. And again, use being able to use those keywords so that you are gonna be relevant when it comes to searches and your potential client looking for you. So I'm just gonna pop that in there. Again, just kind of using some descriptive words, holistic approach, autoimmune disease, preventative health. And it looks like I went over by one or I guess two spaces there. So, all right, so now I've got my 255 characters, perfect. So we can look off to the right. We see that the name of our page populated. We have our first category that we selected underneath that. And we have a decent description using hopefully um, some relevant keywords that will help us come up in the searches. So I'm gonna click create page and we are now a page, perfect. So now I'll be able to scroll down a little bit further. We've got some more options to take care of here. We want to add a profile picture. We also want to add a cover photo. So I'm just gonna click here on add profile picture. I'm just gonna pull up one that I have saved and that will pop up right there. Please, please, please make sure that your images uh, are both clear, are bright, um, and that it's got a forward-facing picture, especially if it's of yourself or an individual, as well as the cover photo. And I'm gonna actually show you a quick tool. We're gonna head over to Canva. If you're not familiar, I'm gonna give you a super quick run through of a tutorial on how to create a cover photo with Canva. I, we do have more of these videos in our educational library, so be sure to check those out. But I'm heading over to canva.com, and I already have my, uh, I'm already logged into my account. 
You can do a lot with a free account, so if you have not already, I highly encourage you to sign up. But if we look at the top here under templates, and you go down under social media, you will see right there a Facebook cover. Now, why is this important? There are a lot of different specs in order to optimize your, your photo, and Canva has just about everything you can think of. So I'm gonna click on Facebook cover, and the beautiful thing, the other beautiful thing about Canva, there's many beautiful things, but they actually will, will populate a bunch of different templates for you. So if you have absolutely no idea where to start, you're not a creative designer, um, you know, this doesn't come naturally to you, they give you all of these, just they hand them over to you for you to kind of manipulate and customize to your specific niche or your specific brand. Now, I already have one done, so I am going to cruise over to one that I have already created. And I've got a few here, I'm just gonna kind of show you real quick. Um, so everything is, again, customized, customizable. Um, so depending on if you start with a template or you start from scratch, everything on this Facebook cover can be change. So the color of the font, the style of the font, your logo, any images, any colors, all of this is customizable. But again, I'm not going to go too deep down this avenue right now because I do have some other great videos for you. I just wanted to show you this tool because it is so powerful when it comes to creating stunning images that are exactly the specs needed to optimize on a bunch of different platforms. So I'm gonna head back to Facebook and I'm gonna add my cover photo. So I'm gonna upload, okay, perfect. Whether you're on a desktop, a tablet, or a mobile device, it will slightly change. So it's always important to, to view this, sort of move it around. You can do that by dragging um, the image actually over here to the left to kind of get it just right. And if you wanna, again, check to see what that image might look like on mobile, you can click that right here. And you know, right now, I think on both of them, that looks pretty good. Get to the root of the issue, target heel, optimize. Okay, it's got our little logo in there. I feel really good about it. So I'm gonna click save. And our page is moving right along. We now have what it would look like. You can actually, at any point in time, come down here and click view as a visitor and see exactly what it looks like for our potential audience. Now, honestly, a lot of people just stop here and that would be a terrible tragedy because there's so much more we can do within this Facebook page to really optimize it so that both you and your potential audience will benefit from it. So let's dive in a little bit more on the left-hand side here. And honestly, I could spend a lot of time on each of these. I really just want to highlight some of the ones that I believe are the most important for you and your business, especially starting out. Okay, so one thing I want to touch on before moving forward, and I think this is relevant for just about every digital marketing platform, every social media platform, is you always want to make it crystal clear to your potential audience who you are, what you do, and what sets you apart from the competition. And I want to add actually one more thing, and that is a call to action or CTA. And so we've got all of that right here. We got who we are, we've got what we do, what sets us apart. And for our call to action, I wanna direct your attention to where Facebook has the add a button over here. So that's the first thing that we wanna tackle. This is something that you need to be using if you have a Facebook page. A lot of times this goes untouched or unused and this is missing out on so many opportunities to convert your client. So I'm going to click on add button. Now, Facebook has a number of options for you to choose from. So really it's going to depend on your niche or what it is you're actually trying to get your potential client or potential audience to do. And so in this case, I'm just going to kind of look through some of them. 
you know, so so what is it that you want your audience to, to do? Do you want them to reach out to you via phone? And I should say one thing to keep in mind is you want the ease of use to be extremely high. People nowadays are so used to convenience that if it takes them any extra steps, they are more than likely not going to do it. You know, maybe it's as simple as learning more. Maybe you have some additional information you want to give them. Uh, Maybe, you know, you want them to message you, just send a message and reach out. Maybe you want them to actually book now and, you know, do a free consult of some sort. But just for now, I'm going to click learn more and it will then give you the opportunity to put in a website and this could be a landing page. If you're not familiar with that, check out our video library. We've got some more information on that and what a sales funnel is. Um, but maybe you have a either a one-page website or a full website and you want to direct someone to your to your actual website. Or maybe it is a YouTube channel where you've got educational videos. Wherever it is you want to send your audience, that is the URL that you would put in here. So just for these purposes, I'm going to put jsmithmd.com and click save. So that means that when my audience sees my page, they'll see a learn more button now up here. And if they click on that, it'll direct them to that exact URL or that website that I just put in there. So we've got that set up. Let's go over and I just want to show you some of these things on the left side. And again, we're just going to highlight the really powerful ones. Um, you, there's not going to be obviously any insights right now on your page, but this is a really powerful tool later to go in and check. So all this information over here, as far as your insights, you know, once you do get some content up and you're starting to see what people are responding to, all this information here is really fun and helpful just to kind of look through and it'll give you an idea of you know the age the sex the time all the stuff as far as the audience that you are drawing to your page you know it'll give you a lot of demographics on them as well as what they're engaging most with so it's super helpful when it comes to continuing to create content that they are looking for so again, back over here, we're going to click back to our page. Publishing tools. This is more once you start running Facebook ads, if that's something that you're interested in. Really, we're going to focus mostly on these last two icons down here, edit page info and settings. So I'm going to click on that edit page info. Okay, so we're in the edit page info and a lot of this information is actually stuff that you have already filled out when you created the, the initial step of creating the page. Now, your username is sort of your handle for Facebook, and you'll notice a lot of times, you know, you'll see that at sign, and maybe you want your username to be J Smith MD. Okay, and we've got our description. If you wanted to edit that, you would do that inside this tab. We've got our categories. If you wanted to add a phone number, if you were an actual brick and mortar practice and you have a number that people can leave messages on if they want to try and get in contact with you or for a consult, that would be a great place to put that. As well as your email address and your website. All that information you want to fill out here. If you are a brick and mortar, your location would be really helpful for those that are trying to find someone in your niche or your specialty and they want it locally. So don't forget this step. Or let's say you, you don't have a brick and mortar store, but you still like to work with patients one-on-one -on -one or face-to-face, -face, a location of some sort you would want to put in here. And then some things down here as far as hours. Are you always open? If you do your work online, maybe you want to click on that so that you're always open. If you want to do selected hours, you could click on that and then put in your specific hours of when people can expect to get a hold of you. For now, I'm just going to click always open. 
temporary service changes, you know, a, a, with today's day and age and what's going on in our world, this is something new that Facebook has added. So, you know, if you are temporary closed operating as usual, you know, this is always a good one to click so that people know that your um, practice is not affected. And then if you wanted to add any more of this information down here, your price range, all that stuff, that is an option to you as well. So going back over here now into settings. Okay, so I do, I, before moving on, I wanna highlight this. So a lot of times with Facebook, when you first create a page, it will not allow you to create a username or a handle right away. So just know in a week or two, you wanna come back and try that again. Okay, so going down to settings, and this can look a little overwhelming. We're just gonna go through it pretty quickly, line by line, and again, just highlight the ones that I believe are most important in initially setting up for your business, and then you can dive a little bit deeper as you become more comfortable with Facebook and the page settings. So coming down here to messaging, this is a super powerful tool because let's face it, we cannot be on Facebook 24 seven, nor would I want anyone to be, but this is powerful because what this allows you to do is stay in contact with whoever reaches out to you in a very timely way that at least lets them know that you're aware of them and you will get back to them shortly. So if we go down to starting a messenger conversation, show a greeting. So greet people before they send your page a message. Your greeting appears in the chat window before a message is sent or in the about section of your business messenger profile. If that is something you want, and basically what that means is if a potential client were to land on your Facebook page, uh, just a little friendly message would pop up. You can make it as conversational and as formal or informal as you want it, but it just lets them know, hey, do you have any questions? You know, feel free to reach out. So it gives you an example. If you were to click that on, then you have the opportunity to change that. You can change this over here and add a personalization. Instead of the full name, sometimes just the first name. It's a little bit more casual, a little less formal. Um, so you could say, hi, Jennifer, thanks for getting in touch with us. Please send us any questions you may have, and we will be in touch shortly. And you can save that. So anytime someone new visited your Facebook page, that's what they would see. And that would also sort of prompt them to maybe start a conversation with you, which ultimately is what we want. Messenger URL. Now this is something that will change once that username is changed. So you'll be able to copy this link and send it to people if you want them to be able to directly message you on Messenger. And then down here, set up automated responses. This is something I would highly encourage you to do. So let's click on set up. And this is different than when someone were to land on your Facebook page. So this is someone that actually clicked on Messenger and is trying to message you directly to have some either questions answered or get more information. So right now your away message is off. You can always turn that on and do a personal greeting if you are away or you could also set up an instant reply. Click edit, and they give you again, Facebook kind of pops up a generic response, thanks for your message, we're away and can't respond right now, we appreciate you reaching out. So maybe instead we wanna do something that's a little bit more personal. So I'm just gonna copy and paste something. We're doing our best to reply to any and all messages. We are taking special care of some patients right now, but someone will be in touch soon, thanks. So again, just adding a little bit of your personality. You can also put your name and then hopefully you're checking your messages at least once a day so that you can then respond with more detail uh, to follow up on these potential clients. Now there's other, uh, some other fun stuff you can do as far as frequently asked questions. You know, these can be automatically populated. We're not gonna get into that right now, but just know that you can go back and customize that even more. Next up, I wanna to touch on templates and tabs. Now, before doing that, I wanna actually go back into the Facebook page to show you exactly where these show up. So 
just under your image, your profile image, you see these four buttons, home, groups, events, and more. Now you want to think about your business and how these apply to it. So under that settings tab and under templates and tabs, you can actually, you'll see there are a bunch more down here that you can toggle on and actually even move them around so that they are the ones that your audience will see first on your Facebook page. So let's, um, maybe we don't want reviews, we don't want groups, but occasionally you'll maybe have some live events or maybe even online events, so you wanna keep that one on there. Maybe you want them to know what your services are and your offers are, but you want them to be a little bit higher up on the chain here. Um, if you do have all of these toggled on, you'll notice, and we'll go back and check on this in just a second, that they'll just pop up under the more button. So it will only show those first three. And maybe you've got a shop, an online shop that you wanna be able to, for them to access. And maybe you've got some great customer testimonials um, and reviews that are pretty powerful when it comes to uh, social proof. So let's go back and just take a look at what that looks like now. So you can see how these have changed. You have home, offers, and services. And if you were to click on the more button, you can see the other ones. Events was the other one that you toggled on. All the ones that you will turn or do turn on will be under this more tab. So back into settings, let's now go down to Instagram, if you were to click on that, it's very simple to add your Instagram account. You would just click on connect account and then follow the guidelines that Facebook has you go through. And that honestly is for the most part, everything you need to know to have a very sturdy and strong foundation when it comes to setting up your Facebook page. Now, of course, like I said, once you get a little bit more familiarized, with Facebook and the settings, you know, definitely go in here, play around. Uh, don't forget to use that insights tab to really take a hard look at, you know, what content is driving engagement and what your target market is looking like. Like, who are you attracting to your page? Is that, in fact, your ideal client um, and how to best serve them? So if you wanted to come over here and just get an idea as a visitor what your Facebook page would look like, you can always click on that. And this is what it would look like when someone visited your Facebook page. One thing you wanna do while you're in here as a viewer is you wanna make sure you click on that call to action button and be sure that there's no broken links, that it actually will redirect you to the page that you specified. And then once you're done kind of looking around, you can exit view as. One thing to keep in mind as you're kind of scrolling down your personal view is that, you know, a lot of times we get confused and think that, you know, uh, our viewers can see our insights and they know that maybe we don't have a lot of engagement, don't have a lot of reach. Well, this is not viewable to them at all. And again, you can see that when you go to view as visitor. They don't get to see that information. So don't worry about that. We just want to work on getting great content out there, increasing that engagement, and making sure that we are adding value to our potential clients' lives. So I know that was a pretty deep dive and it was going through it pretty quickly, but I'm hoping that you were able to pull out some, some good gems on just setting up the foundation of your Facebook page and some helpful tools like Canva that you can use to simplify this process. Be sure to check out our other video tutorials and educational resources that are available to you. And best of luck creating your Facebook page.